Hello, everyone, and welcome to chapter 42 of the SLOTA course. In previous chapters, we've talked quite a bit about cleaning up our application logic and our authentication logic. We've come a good bit forward with that, and we've um, we cleaned up quite a bit of stuff in the login view, and now we're using block listener in the login view, if you followed all the chapters chronologically up to, up to and including the previous chapter. So you should already know about block, block listener, block consumer, block provider, um, and block builder, of course. But we have quite a bit left. And I'm actually proud to say that this chapter and maybe the next one or two chapters are going to be like the glues that bring the application to a, a lot more tighter point where it will be ready for releasing to the App Store and the Play Store. So if you stick with me throughout these few chapters that are left, we are going to basically create a, a lot more cleaner product that is not only usable by the end user, but it's also but it's also architecturally sound. So it, you're going to be proud of actually releasing this application or maybe even showing this code to your friends and uh, colleagues. So as a caption in the case, in this chapter, we're going to talk about moving to block for routing and dialogues. Because right now, you know, routing, what we have in our application is kind of like a, a hybrid in the main Dart file. Uh, I mean, we don't have to talk about... Uh, so like abstract concept, concepts, we can actually look at our main Dart file. So if you look here, what we've done in the main Dart file, we're actually creating a block builder. And depending on the states that are being output by our block, we're displaying the correct view. So this in itself is quite fine. So there's nothing wrong with this. But we're also mixing this up with custom places in our application where we're, where we're saying, for instance, context of, um, let's see, actually, let navigator of. Um, and you can see we're doing, actually, that's fine. But you can see in our login view, when you press the not registered yet, register here button in order to do the registration of the user, then we're doing a navigator of push, blah, blah, blah. So there's quite a few bits and pieces left in, still in our application that we're either directly talking with our auth service, which we shouldn't be doing. We should be talking to the auth block. Or, and we're talking with navigator of something to do push name. So in this chapter, we're going to clean these things up and make make basically our auth block and the cons consumption of our auth block a lot tighter. All right, using block listeners, block builders, and um, we're all also going to use block consumers, I believe. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is, I mean, the, as, you, as the caption indicates, I mean, I've already talked about this. Maybe I should have displayed this caption a, a few seconds ago, <laughs> but we've already talked about this. We should basically tighten up how we're working with our um, routing and our um, uh, how we work with auth service. And you can see in here, we need a few more auth events in order to be able to achieve this. So let's go ahead and open our... Um, I need to probably do some reshuffling on the screen here so you see the code better. So I'll do what I usually do here. And then let's go to our auth event in here. So these are the events that we have at the moment. We have log out, log in, and then we have an initialize. But we also have quite a few other UI events that the application is doing in order to, for instance, interact with authentication, such as um, sending a verification email. All right, so when you're in the verify email view and the user presses send the verification email again, then that is at the moment talking with our auth service directly and we shouldn't be doing that. We should be asking our auth block to do that. Or when you, for instance, um, ask the in, in our verify email view, so if you go here, you can see that we had this um, log out button or the restart button. So let's go ahead and I'm going to bring SCRCPY in here. And let's um, actually to be able to show the verify email, we have to have a user who hasn't been verified. But if you remember from before, if you've created a user just recently uh, or just, just now, for instance, and that user hasn't verified their credentials, then they're going to always be moved into this verify email view in which they have to, for instance, say that, yeah, um, I, um, I did, they had the ability to send a verification email to their email again or restart the whole process, meaning to log out and just go to the register or the login viewing. And so that is at the moment happening directly. You can see it's off service 
directly to the auth service and we shouldn't be doing that. And then there is a navigator of push named and removed onto which we shouldn't be doing either. So in order to tighten these things up, we need a few more events in our auth event Dart file. And that's what we're going to do right now. So let's go to our auth event uh, file and I'm going to do the same thing in my notes. So um, the first new event that we're going to create in here, as you can see, it's called auth event send email verification. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to get rid of this bottom view in here and also the project structure. So I've already written that in my notes. So I'm just going to bring it here to the to Visual Studio Code so I don't have to write it manually. But the event name should be called auth event send email verification. The goal is for our um, verify email view to send this event to our auth block in order to request a new verification email to be sent to the currently logged in user. Okay. We also need a register event. So the goal is that inside register view, so let's go have a look at the register view right now. And you can see when the user presses the register button at the moment, we're saying oh, Firebase create user. So we're going directly to Firebase auth service. And we're saying create user. And then immediately we're saying send email verification. So we shouldn't be doing any of these. So these three things that we're doing in here are pretty much wrong from the architecture perspective. So we shouldn't be talking with these services directly. We should clean this up, OK? In order to achieve that, we need to go back to our auth event and create a new auth event called register. So I'm going to bring that at the bottom of login here. So let me go ahead and create a new um, auth event, we call it class auth event register. And of course, we're going to extend our auth event. And for register, we need two parameters. If we go back to the register view, you see upon registering, we're always sending the email and the password. So let's go ahead and do the same thing in here. So we say final string email, and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to say just password and get help from Visual Studio Code to create this constant constructor. Okay. You may want to make these required named fields using these, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to leave it like this with email and password. Okay. So that's our auth event register. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the other thing that we need, uh, an event called should register. So um, basically that means, for instance, if you um, haven't really registered, a user yet, then we need to send this event. And I'm actually going to have a look in my uh, login view. Um, and that is if you, for instance, go to uh, login view in here, and then you have a look at this button that we have in here, not registered yet, register here. That is basically the event that we're going to implement right now. So we're going to tell the auth block that, hey, you should register a user, OK? And then the auth block is then going to change its state to a state that the application is going to understand and automatically send the user to the register view, OK? So that's the use case. So um, let's go ahead. I'm going to just check my notes as well. Let's go ahead and develop this should register. And I've already done that in my notes. So I'm going to bring it at the bottom of auth event register. But you will need to write this yourself. So it looks like auth event should register extends auth event. And it just has a constant constructor. So it's very simple. OK? So that was for our auth um, event should register. So. At the moment, if we go now, as you can see it in the caption, we need also, and now we've done the auth events, like this stuff that we had to create in order to be able to handle various um, events that come from the UI. But we also need to fix up our states. So let's go to our auth state and have a refresher in here. You can see we have a state loading, logged in, needs verification, logged out, and log out failure. But we're going to clean this up a little bit and make sure that we have every state that our application requires in order to be able to, for instance, display dialogues or do routing, OK? So in, in at the moment, in our auth state, what we need to do is to create, you see, we have this loading state. And what we're going to do is to actually remove the loading state. And we're going to create a, an auth state called uninitialized, all right? so. Um, Let's go ahead and actually remove this auth state loading and create a class in here, say auth state uninitialized. 
Because when you land in the application uh, for the first time, you may actually want to, for instance, display some sort of loading screen or whatever. And we're going to indicate that the application hasn't really initialized Firebase or its authentication system using this auth state uninitialized. It's just it's just a cleaner way of indicating to the to, uh, the, the call site, which is UI, that, hey, we haven't yet been initialized. So you need to call the initialize function on our auth block, OK? Or sorry, you have to send the auth event of. Uh, initialize auth event. Okay, so let's go to auth state. So uh, just to recap, I removed auth state loading. And now we're going to put in our auth state uninitialized. So we're going to say uninitialized extends auth state. And let's just create a constant constructor for it as well. Just like that. Okay. So the other thing that we have to implement as well is to you see, we've talked about login, like here, login, logged out, and then log out failure, etc. And and now we actually have to start talking about what happens when the user presses the register button. When the user presses the register button, we also have to handle the case that yeah, we are registering at the moment, so it's a process that's ongoing. But we also have to talk about what happens if the registration fails. So we are in the process of registering. Either it goes fine, and then we say you're registered, or we say registra registration failed. So let's go ahead and create a um, a state in here right after uninitialized. Let's just say class of state. What are we calling it? Registering extends auth state, okay? And let's just in here, as we're doing in here, for instance, in the state of logged out, let's just copy this exception and bring it into auth state registering. And then let's create a constant constructor here for our auth state registering. And I'm just gonna say const in here, okay? So now we have registering like that. So now we have registering logged in, <clears throat> and we also actually need to remove auth state logged out failure because we, well, <clears throat> excuse me, we have logged out with an exception. Mm, so let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's just remove auth state logged out, log out failure as well. All right. So, <clears throat> excuse me again. So that's for auth state registering. So as you can see in the caption, it says loading of the logged out state. We need login screen to have a loading dialog. So we need is loading in the auth state logged out. So let's have a look at our logged out here. <clears throat> and previously we had this loading state as a separate state. So it was auth state to loading and we were going to generically use it everywhere. But now what we're going to do is to build this loading state into or to build this loading flag into existing states themselves. So let's then go ahead and say, well, when you press the login button, what we're going to do first is just to say, uh, actually, wait, let's go one step back. Let's say you just landed in the application, but you already have a user, which you haven't logged them before. Okay, So your state is logged out, and the exception is null. And we're going to add a flag in here and say final bool is loading. And let's add that is loading to this parameter in here and make both of these required parameters, okay, like this. And put a comma there as well, like this. Boom. So when you land in the application, exception, your state is logged out. There is no exception, so exception is null and is loading is false because we're not loading anything. Then you write your credentials and you press the login button. Then what happens? State is still logged out. Exception is null, but loading is true. Then let's just say that you entered the incorrect credentials. Then what we're going to do in our block, auth block, is going to say, ooh, your auth state logged out. There is an exception, and is loading is false. And then you'd be like, OK, now uh, I entered the incorrect credentials. Then you're going to correct those, and then press the login button again. Now what are we going to say? We're going to say, OK, auth state logged out. Exception is nothing, and then is loading is true. And if then we can log you in that we're going to produce another state for you. So you see, this is how we're using states to convey the like the correct state of the application to the consumer, which is the UI. Okay. 
So, and this is not like you may think, oh, how does he know that this is the right right way of doing things? Well, there is no right and wrong in here. It is just how you reason about your application. And when I say there is no right and wrong, what I mean is that some things are more right than the others and some things are more wrong than the others. But what you need to find is like the sweet spot in here, which is, which is exactly good for your application and at the same time is not incorrect, okay? And that is the definition of right for your application. And in this case, this is the definition of right for this application. So you just need to find that sweet spot for your application, okay? So now let's have a look in here a little and talk a little about a little bit about equality. Um, and um, what I mean by equality in here is that you see what I talked about is three different logged out states. Logged out with exception null is loading false. Logged out with exception null is loading true, and then logged out with an exception and is loading false, for instance. So you're producing three different types of states, all of the same class. So how will, how will uh, your application understand that these are actually different states? So you kind of need to differentiate between various states of your auth state logged out. So you kind of need to tell your application that, hey, although the previous state was also auth state logged out, and the correct, like the one that I'm producing right now is also auth state logged out, but these two states could actually be different from each other and in what they contain. So you need to kind of create like an equality um, logic into your states to tell the application, hey, this, although it's the same, is like a new instance of the same state class, but internally is not the same thing. And for that, we have to implement equality, all right? Now, there is a good package that allows you to do this in order to implement equality in your applications and in your dark code, and it is called Equitable. So let's go ahead and import that. And don't be intimidated by all these logs in here. It's just because we have a lot of problems that we're fixing at the moment. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to change the screen layout a little bit, increase the size, and let's just go ahead and say Flutter pop add Equitable. Just like that. And you can read more about that. So I'm just going to bring up my Safari in here. And let's just say Flutter or just pub dev. And let's just say uh, equitable. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see it is actually developed by Flutter community dev in here. Okay, so it's a verified developer in here. And you can also actually follow uh, Flutter community dev on Twitter as well to get some updates about their packages. Okay. So we're now importing that into our application and we should now be able to use that. So I'm going to get rid of this uh, bottom bar, uh, change the screen layout again, decrease the font size. Okay, so in here, now let's go and import Equitable. So I'm going to just import that. I've already imported that in my notes. So I'm just going to paste that in here. You import Equitable like this package, Equitable slash Equitable Dart. Okay. So what we need here is we're already extending an existing class. So what you can do is you can bring in equality in your classes using a mixin. So we're going to say mixin equitable mixin, just like that. Uh, sorry, with. Okay. So now that we're doing with that mixin, now we have to implement a few functionalities in here. As you can see, Visual Studio Code helps me. It says create one missing override. Okay. So I do that override in here and it says, okay, now we have to override this property. And you can see in here, what you need to return is a list of properties that have to be taken into account when the equitable package can basically calculates e equality in your class. And in here, what we're going to say is that we have two properties in here called exception and we also have is loading. So take these two properties into account when Com uh, computing equality in the instances of auth state logged out. All right, uh, very well done. So that's that's what we've done in here. So we've made our auth state logged out class equitable. And the reason again for that is that we need to produce various various um, mutations of this auth state logged out 
and those different mutations with various exceptions as is loading need to be distinguishable from each other okay and that's why we're using the equitable package in here so um this thing we've already talked about and we don't need the auth state logout failure so we we've removed that already as part of the cleanup that we were doing earlier but if you forgot to do that please just look at the caption at the bottom of the screen just to make just make sure go you go to auth state dart file and remove your auth state logout failure and the reason behind that since i explained before is that now logout failure is actually built in and baked into auth state logged out class inside an exception all right Wow. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the next section now. Well, you see, at the moment, we have no loading screens in our application. So when something happens, when we're doing an API call, for instance, or we're um, going to our auth provider and say, log in or send an email verification, we have no loading screen inside the application. So there is nothing that indicates to the user that something is actually happening. And we're going to go fix that up soon. So as you'll see, we're going to create a new dialog, which does some loading for the user. And then using that dialog, the user is going to understand that, okay, something is happening. I just have to wait for it, okay? But the user experience that we have right now is kind of suboptimal in that uh, the user presses the login screen and dependent on their sorry, the user presses the login button and dependent on their internet connectivity and the speed of their internet, internet connection, that operation could take anywhere between a few milliseconds to a few seconds. So if you're making a user wait a few seconds based on their internet connection speed, then you have to kind of display to them that you're doing something. Well, the the usual, I mean, way that you could do that is to display some sort of a small loading indicator. For instance, on iOS, natively, you have a little loading indicator that sits on, on the status bar that just moves a little bit. And it's very tiny. I would dare to say it's less than 20 pixels wide and 20 pixels in height, kind of. It could even be like 17 pixels width and height. It's very little. So it's a subtle indication that something is happening. But that's usually, I mean, I find that quite annoying because when something is loading, you kind of need to block the user from trying to press the same button thousands of times. So if you display that little loading indicator on the top on the status bar, then what you also have to do, you have to add some extra logic to your application to block, for instance, the current register button or the lo loading button. And you usually don't want to do that but because that's just extra logic. What would make more sense is upon a user pressing the login button or the register button, you want to display like a blocking screen that tells them that, hey, I'm doing something. Okay, so don't do anything else while this screen is, is visible on your mobile display. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to code a loading screen. As you can see in the caption, it says we're going to do it in lib utilities dialogs loading dialog. So let's go ahead and do that and bring up my notes as well. So I'm going to close all these files just to ensure we've also saved them. Because if you close a file in Visual Studio Code, at least, which we haven't saved before, Visual Studio Code is going to display your dialog saying, are you sure you want to close this file without saving it? So it's usually good practice to close your existing files before you move into doing something new so that you at least are sure that you've saved those changes, OK? Um, now let's, I mean, we have some errors. Don't worry about that. So uh, you should now be comfortable with having errors in your application because you know at the end of every chapter, we're going to tighten things up and fix things. Okay, so let's go to lib utilities dialog, um, lib utilities dialogs, and we're going to create a new file in here as the caption indicates called loading dialog dart. And you see this loading dialog, what we also have to have in this loading dialog is to allow, to allow the caller to display this dialog, but also to allow the caller to dismiss this dialog. So it's very important to be able to dismiss a dialog when the application actually needs for that dialog to disappear. So what we're going to do first is to bring a, create a type def in here, and we are going to call it closed dialog. Let me just increase the size of the font as well. And we're going to make sure that it's equal to a void function in here. Okay, so what we're going to do in here, we have we're going to create a function that displays a loading dialog, but it also returns back a function that the caller can call to dismiss it. 
So it may be a little bit of a shift in how you think about programming if it's the first time you're doing something like this, but I promise you it, it, it will make a lot more sense as we develop it. So let's say then we have a function that returns a closed dialog um, and we call it show loading dialog, okay? And it has two uh, required parameters. So let's put curly brackets in here. Um, and then let's just say we have required build context and we call it build context, or let's just call it context. And then we have a text to display. So required string text, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So, and now you can see you get this required build context, try changing its name, and I'm gonna get help from Visual Studio Code to import, let's say, material, okay? Now we have just one error saying that you're not returning anything in here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to define our dialogue. How is this loading dialogue going to look like? So it's the only thing it's going to do is just to have a little loading indicator, a bit of spacing, and text that is going to be uh, using the text widget to render this string. So let's first define our dialogue. So I'm just going to say final dialogue is equal to alert dialogue, like this. And let's just go to the next line, semicolon, all right? And then we have to define the content for it. As you can see, content should be a widget. So the widget we're developing is a column because we want like a vertical list of widgets. The loading screen, a little bit of a size box, spacing, and a text widget. So you can render that with column easily. And remember, a column, what, what column wants to usually do is to grab as much space as it needs. So it could be like the entire screen long. We don't want that. What we want for the column to take as little space as it needs to render its content correctly. So we're going to say main axis size, oops, axis size. It should be of type main axis size. And we're going to say main axis size of minimum. All right. And its children are going to be an array of two constant uh, widgets of a circular progress indicator like that. And then we're going to say a constant of size box. We haven't used size box before, but size box is really good for um, creating spacing. So uh, as you can see in here, it's just an empty space with a height of 10. And then what we're going to do in here, we're just going to say display also a text that renders this particular text parameter in here. So like that. Okay. Now we're we have a little bit of a problem here with how this thing is rendered and you can see they're in the same line and that's why it kind of looks strange. Let's put a comma in here and then save the file to get the uh, formatting correct. And let's put a comma in here as well, like that. Okay, so now it's working as it should or at least it's formatting as it should. So then what we're gonna do in here, we're gonna just say, uh, we wanna display that dialog. So let's say show uh, oops, <laughs> show uh, show dialog, okay? And let's go in here and the context of this dialog, and I'm gonna bring it here so you see it. The context is the context that we are providing to this function. And a barrier dismissible, and uh, I'm gonna show you the documentation for barrier dismissible. And let's see if we can actually find that. Well, it's not helping me with that, but that's okay. Um, what barrier dismissible, allows you to do is to say that if the user taps outside this dialog, either allow the dismissal of this dialog or don't. And we don't want the user to be able to tap outside this dialog in order to dis dismiss it because a loading screen should be dismissed when we want it to be dismissed, not when the user wants it to be dismissed. And also for those who are UX designers who are watching this course, you may be actually tempted also to, um, for instance, um, provide a cancel. I actually think having a cancel button in most loading screens is a good idea because sometimes for whatever reason, an application may not be able to handle, for instance, different errors and exceptions that could occur while making an API call. And I personally have been in the situation where a, a dialogue was displayed to the user and it was just never dismissed because something went wrong, the application wasn't able to handle it. So I personally, as a user, had to go and force kill the application and restart the entire process in order to get things working. So if you want to have a cancel button in here, it's fine, but um, I'm not doing that right now. It's just for the sake of simplicity so that we can move on with this code as um, as fast as accurate as fast and accurate as possible. 
So now you know what bare dismissible false does. And for the builder function, that's what this um, error is here. We have to just say, okay, we get a context. Uh, but in here, what we do is just do, we remove, we, we return the dialogue in here. Okay, so now we're saying show this dialogue. Um, and then we're just gonna say the return value. See, we still have this problem with the return value that we're not returning a closed dialogue. And what this closed dialogue is just gonna be is we are gonna return a function from our function. So when the user then calls that function, we're gonna pop this dialogue. It's, uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> so let's just say we return a function, an error function, upon calling which we are going to say navigator of this context and we're just going to say pop okay so that's how you return a function that can be acted upon and invoked by others so now we save this and you can see we don't have any errors i'm going to just um, uh, resize this a little bit make the font a little bit smaller so you see the code in its entirety so now let's talk about loading and exception handling during the login process. So uh, let's go to our login view. And you see here, we have already some exception handling and we also have this alt block, but we also have this text button that is doing like manual navigation. It says push name and remove until, and we need to clean these things up, okay? So let's go inside our uh, login view. And so I'm going to also do it in my notes. And um, let's have a look at how we've done things. You can see in here, we have a block listener at the moment that is wrapping uh, itself around this text button. So we're not going to do that. We're going to have the text button exactly the way it is. Uh, so meaning that we're going to remove this block listener from here. Okay. So what we could do is as the caption indicates, we're just going to go here to the scaffold and just say, okay, we have a new block listener. And remember, this should be the auth block itself. So I'm going to say auth block, and this is, should be the auth state like this. So then inside the listener, what we need to do is to bring what we had already um, inside uh, our uh, text button in here. So we have the exception handling, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So as the caption indicates, we're going to do this exception handling now inside our new block listener on top. So remove all the code from your block listener for your text button, all the exception handling, just cut it and bring it please up into this block listener, which is at the top level. All right. And make this an async listener so that you can await on your show error dialogue. Okay. So that's the first step. However, we still have this empty block listener in here. So I'm going to remove that now. So all of a sudden, you see now we have the text button in here. All right, that was fantastic. So then what we need to do is to start handling our uh, loading uh, screen, basically. So that is going to be a bit of code, So, uh, but don't be scared of that. Uh, we're going to handle that soon. So in order to be able to display our loading screen we also have to kind of like keep hold of this um close handle what do i mean by that let's go back to our loading uh, dialogue you see every time we call this function this is going to give us a function back so that we can close the uh, the dialogue we have to keep hold of this so that when the states change inside our login view we're going to look at that previous handle and be like oh we had a loading screen uh, display to the user we have to first dismiss it okay so let's go where we're keeping hold of our email and password in here and keep hold of a closed dialog and it's going to auto import that you see so if you don't have auto import you may have to import this uh, file yourself so let's say it's an optional and we call it close dialog handle okay so we keep hold of that we haven't assigned to it yet but we're going to do that soon so let's then in here in the state of logged out and uh, right here just add some space and what we're going to do we're going to say um, do we already have a closed dialog handle so let's say close and uh, dialog is closed dialog handle and what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at our states and also if we have a closed dialog handle 
and we're going to display correct uh, behavior, basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if um, state is loading, if we're not loading at the moment, meaning that maybe we were loading before, then our goal in here is that saying that if we are not loading and, <clears throat> excuse me, close dialog is not null, and, sorry, <laughs> and. So uh, in this case, what this conveys to us, saying, it says that we're not loading now, but we were loading before. And that the bot part is coming from here. What we need to do in here then is just to close that dialog. So let's just say close dialog. We call that function, you see. And then we say uh, close dialog handle is null. So we're just cleaning that up now, OK? And then we're saying now, if what we have to handle, so what we've handled right now is closing the dialog, but we also have to handle showing the dialog. So we're now going to say if the state is loading, and we don't have a closed dialog. Sorry, we don't have a loading dialog yet on the screen. Then we have to show it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's say if state is loading, and closed dialog is null, then we have to show the dialog. So let's just say closed dialog handle is equal to show loading dialog. We pass the context. Let's do some formatting in here, and let's just say loading. Dot 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 just like that, OK? And we leave the rest of the stuff in the code exactly as it is. The next thing that we need to do now is to, as you can see in the caption on the screen, we have to hook the register button to our auth block. When register button is tapped, send the auth event should register to the block. And what we're going to do then is go to and find this button in here at the bottom of the loading v uh, sorry login view dart file, and upon pressing it, let's just make this. Um, yeah, I don't think it really has to be any asynchronous code at all. So let's just in here. Let's say that we grab our auth block. So let's say context read, and we are looking for auth block in our context, and then we're going to send it an event. And we're going to send const auth event should should register just like that. Okay. So, and I believe add event is not async or anything. It's just a void. So this function doesn't have to be async. So if you had it as async, you can just safely remove that. I'm just going to save this file as well. All right. A lot of work. We've we're kind of now almost done with uh, our login view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close all these files that are on the screen right now, and we're going to start moving towards uh, also blockifying our register view. So let's go, as the caption says, let's go to register view. And having a look here, at the moment, we don't have, uh, I can see in here, in the previous chapters, we've been working with cleaning up the login view, so blockifying the login view, but we didn't do the same thing in register view, and that's fine. We're going to take care of that. And I can see that by just looking at our try and catch statements in here. You see, these things shouldn't be in the text button. So, as the, but one thing at a time, as the caption of the uh, as the caption at the bottom screen indicates, we're going to wrap the scaffold inside a block listener. So it's going to be very similar to how we did it for our lo 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 login view. Command dot and grab a wrap with block listener in here. And I'm just going to say uh, this is going to be the auth block. And it's going to auto import it for me. So very important. If you're getting errors for the auth block not being found in this context, it's probably because you haven't imported uh, auth block. So, and in here, we're going to say auth state. And that's going to auto import it as well. And block listener is not available in this context either because we don't have a flutter block. So that's also going to be auto imported. So that's three. <laughs> so that's the three um, auto imports. And they're all available, I believe. So that's auth block auth state and flutter block. So you could actually bring them next to each other if you want to. So you, you know which ones to import. It's these three. Wow, OK. Um, so what we need to do, that, that was the first thing that we had to handle. So we also, as I said, now we have to go and start handling uh, exceptions. So this is very similar to how we did in, did it in the login views. So we kind of need to get rid of these. 
So now what we need to do inside this listener of our block listener, we have to handle the exceptions that we are at the moment handling here at the bottom. So this should be very similar process to how we were doing things in the login view from, if you remember, so if, we, oops, if I go to our login view, you can see we have this uh, block listener and then we're doing this kind of pattern in there. So we're gonna do something very similar to that, except we're gonna do it in register view, okay? so. Inside register view, the state is, uh, I mean, all the exceptions, all the problems that could arise are gonna be inside the um, uh, registering state. So we're just gonna first make sure that we're in that state. Okay, so let's say state is auth state registering. And we're gonna say if state exception <clears throat> is weak password auth exception, then uh, let's make this listener asynchronous so we can do an await on our show dialog. So we, we say await uh, show error dialog. And the text is just going to be weak password. Okay. And then we're going to do another else, uh, an else statement with another if. And we say if state exception. Is email already in use auth exception? And then here we're going to display another dialog that, that says, for instance, email is already in use. Okay. And um, so let's then go to another else statement. So I'm going to just copy this. I'm a little bit lazy. And I'm just going to say generic auth exception. And then we're going to say uh, failed to register. So these are the various exceptions that can occur while you're registering for a user. Okay. And you can see in here, we have three uh, exceptions we're handling. Weak password, email already in use, and then we also have invalid email auth exception. So maybe we could actually handle that as well. So let's just go ahead and add another else statement in here and just say invalid, uh, invalid email auth exception. So we just say invalid email, okay? So now we've handled those four exceptions, all right? So... What we need now is to make sure, as you can see in the caption, that in register view, the register button to send the auth event called auth event register. So let's find that register button that we're talking about here. And that is this text button. You can see it says register, okay? So what we need to do is perhaps to clean this code up at the moment, there's just so much information in here that we don't really have to do. So go to your register button, please, in the register view and just pretty much just nuke this entire try and all these catch statements the way they are. So now we have a clean slate. So now we have just email and password and let's grab the auth block in here and ask the auth block to do the registration. Okay, so I'm just gonna say context and let's just say we grab the um, auth block in here, okay, as a function context if I can spell and then I'm just going to say add in auth events of register here with email and password just like that okay so your code should kind of look like this and put a comma in here to make it a little bit cleaner so just like that all right okay that was for register mm. Now we have also a login button in here, which right now in, inside our register view, do you remember if you end up in the register view and incorrectly, so you just tap on some button and end up in the register and we're like, oh, I'm in the wrong place. I want to log in actually instead. So we have this already registered login here button. And at the moment that is doing custom navigator or push name and remove until, and it shouldn't be doing that. So let's go ahead and fix that up. So let's go in here and remove that code and just say context read auth block. And we're going to basically add an event in here of, con uh, of type const auth event uh, log out, just like that, okay? So that then is gonna send the user to the lo login screen, all right? All right, let's move now to the next point. As you can see, it says send verification button and verify email view dart. Uh, it should send an auth event. And when you press it, it should send the auth event, send the email verification to the block. So I'm gonna go into my notes as well. Uh, as well and just find that button and that, now let's go in our code in here let's go to verify email view 
and have a look at that button that we're talking about, which is right here. And at the moment, as you can see, it's doing all service Firebase send email verification, but we shouldn't be doing that. Um, we should ask our block to do that. So let's just go ahead and first of all, remove that code inside the buttons on press. And then this button doesn't have to be async anymore. And what we're going to say is just going to say context and read. Um, but we don't have read, remember, because we don't have, we haven't imported auth, uh, we haven't imported block or flutter block into this file yet, but we're going to fix that soon. So first of all, just say read the auth block, and that's going to auth import auth block for us. So that's the first part. And now you have this error. Let's get Visual Studio Code to import mm, the same provider, but I actually want flutter block. So uh, let's go ahead and import that ourselves. So let's say package. Flutter block and Flutter block Dart. Now it's fine. All right, so let's in here then add an event. We say const auth event um, send email verification, just like that. All right, so that part is done now. So the next thing we have to do is you can see inside this restart button at the bottom of the screen at the moment is doing quite a lot of work. It is basically first logging out from our auth service and then it's doing navigation. So this button is like all over the place. It's taking care of <laughs> authentication, it's taking care of, I mean, I'm actually very, I'm laughing here because I'm kind of laughing at the progress that we've made so far and that we've gone from very, very raw programming to now very elegant handling of exceptions, elegant handling of routing, etc. Et so it is actually really fun to be here, to be honest with you. So in here, let's remove that code and kind of grab this thing that we have up here in our send email verification button and bring it down here. Instead of sending the auth event send email verification, we're going to send auth event log out like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so that part is done. So what we need now, let's go in. Now let's close this file and go to our auth block. So we have quite a bit of work now to do in our auth block. As you can see, it's just all over the place. So I want to do the same thing in my notes as well. So auth block. The first thing that we need to do is make sure that we are not using this auth state loading because we don't have that anymore. What we have is auth state on initialize. So please take care of that as the first thing. So we also have now an auth event send email verification, and we haven't handled that yet. So let's go on top of this initialize. I'm just going to send, say send email verification, OK? And let's create a new on to handle auth event send email verification, because we haven't handled that. So we have event and emit in here. And uh, let's just go and say this is an async function and then open it and then a semicolon at the end to get the format, uh, formatting working. The only thing we have to do in the auth event send email verification to actually call and tell the provider that, hey, um, we're going to basically send an email verification. All right. So let's just, let's just say await provider and email verification. And then what we're going to do, we're going to emit the exact same um, state. So by coming into, by sending this event, we are just going to do some work and emit the exact same state that you're in. So we're not actually changing the state of the application. Because remember, when you're in the verify email view and then you press the button to actually send a new verification email, what happens on the screen? Nothing. We're not like doing anything. It's just we're sending the email verification. That's all. So we're not sending you to a new screen or anything like that. So that's why we're emitting the exact same state as we had before. All right, now we have to actually handle a um, our auth event register. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do that. So that is completely new. So let's just say on auth event register. And we say we have the events and emits and an asynchronous function, just like that, all right? So when we have the auth event register, if you remember from before, this auth event register include the email and password in itself. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we can grab those inf that information right now and just say email is events that email, and let's just say final password is events.password. Oops. All right. 
So then we're going to put this into a try and catch block. So we're going to say try on exception, catch E. When an exception ha happens, we're just going to emit our um, auth state registering with that E um, state. So we talked about this before, but just to refresh, when you're during the process of register, we actually can emit a new state in here just called registering and then it can it can contain an exception all right <clears throat> so that's what we're emitting in here saying that you're in the process of registering but something bad happened which is an exception all right so in here then let's just say await provider and we're going to create a new user with the email and password they just fit right in so that's really great and then if you remember from the registration process that we had before so um in our register view during registration here, upon doing a registration, we didn't just register the user with the provider, but we also send an email verification just to make sure that the user doesn't have to go and send an email verification manually. So we're gonna do the same thing in our auth block, okay? So let's also await on the provider and we say send email verification just like that, all right? Um, and then after doing that, since you registered a new user, well, what is the state? If you remember from our uh, auth states, auth state, we have this needs verification. We know that when we register a new user, new user that user is always going to need verification, right? So let's go in here and just emit that state. So uh, auth state needs verification, just like that. And that's an empty state, so it doesn't have any parameters and such, all right? All right, um, then we have to handle our auth event initialize. So let's have a look in here and see how the code look, looks like. So in here, what we need to do at the moment, we have logged out, but, but you can see we're not providing the is a loading parameter and we're not providing the exception. So I'm just actually gonna cl clean this and write it by hand manually. So in the emit, let's just emit a const auth uh, state uh, logged out. All right. So when you initialize the application from the beginning, when the application actually runs, we're just going to say by default, you're logged out. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. If the user is null, of course. So in the exception, we don't have any exceptions and we're not loading anything as such. So that's like the default state. So that's it. Come in there and come on here just to get the formatting working. All right, so that seems to be fine, but uh, we also have the initialize in here. Sounds good. Logged out, it's email verified, and that. So yeah, that looks that looks fine to me. Okay, now let's have a look at logging in. As you can see, we have to take care of our login logic a little bit and make sure that we're loading. So when you say I want to log in, we're going to say, okay, you want to log in. That means you're logged out, but you're logged out and there's a loading screen. Okay. That's why we created that loading dialog, which we're going to put into you soon. So upon the user asking to log in, let's just say, okay, we're going to emit our const auth uh, state logged out. Uh, there is no exception and the loading flag is actually true. So like that and like there and just like, okay. So that's the loading part. And let's have a look at how we're doing things in here. So we have our login. <clears throat> um, and we also, as you can see in here, so that, that, that was that part we've taken care of. And now what we have to do is to disable the, disable the loading screen if email is not verified. So um, at the moment we have this user in here, you can see final user. Okay, and then we're just saying state now is all of a sudden logged in, but that is not complete because we're not checking whether the users uh, verified their email address or not. So let's go ahead and say, as the caption indicates, if email not verified, then disable the loading screen by sending a new logged out, okay, before sending the needs verification. So let's take care of that. So we say if um, user is email verified not, and we emit a constant of auth state logged out like that. And we say, well, no exception, and we're not loading. 
all right? So that disables essentially the loading screen, okay? By saying is loading false. Remember here we sent is loading true, now we're sending is loading false. And then right after, when the email is not verified, we actually say then emit a const of auth uh, state needs verification, just like that, all right? Otherwise, if the user's email is verified, then we're going to say we're going to first disable. Let me bring up the correct caption. So we have to do the exact same thing in here. We're going to disable basically the uh, loading screen. Like that. And then we're going to send uh, this logged in state right here. OK. All right. And also, in our exception handling, we, we don't use this. Uh, um, yeah, we are going to use auth state logged out, but we're going to clean this up. So inside emit, we're going to say auth state logged out. And then there is an exception. And we are not loading. OK. so. Please place that inside the exception handling of your um, auth event login. OK, a lot of code, a lot of code. Um, now, as you can see in the caption, it says fix, uh, fix up auth state logged out. We have to emit the auth state logged out and fix up exception handler as well. So uh, let's find out our auth event logged out. And we have a lot of errors in here right now, as you can see. So it would actually be better if we kind of like nuked this code in here and wrote it from scratch. So I'm just going to say try, and then we'll say on exception, catch E. So that's it. And then when there is an exception during logged out, logging out, what we're going to just say, we're going to say, well, you are logged out, but an exception happened. All right. So let's just say um, we emit const, uh, no, actually auth <clears throat> state logged out, there is an exception and we're not loading. Okay. So that's what you need to also place inside your uh, code. So that's for the emit. Now for trying, what, what do we actually have to do? We have to tell our provider to log out. Oops, not log in, log out. All right. And then we also have to emit a new state that we're going to say you're logged out and then there is no exception. So I'm just going to grab this code from there and place it in here and say there is no exception like that. Okay. And it says, well, this can now be a const. So I'm going to make it a const just like that. So the next thing that we have to do is to clean up our routing because you see, the more and more we're blockifying the entire process inside our application, the less we need different different screens to actually do routing manually because routing is gonna be handled by our block listeners and things like that, okay? So let's go ahead and <clears throat> as the caption indicates, in our routes dart file, we're gonna remove all routes except for create or update note route. So let's open routes. Actually, before we do that, I'm gonna close all the files in here just to make sure everything's saved. Then go to route start and remove everything except for <clears throat> that last route. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's now go, now that we've done that, we have to go to our main Dart file. <clears throat> Excuse me again. And we're going to clean up our routing in here. As you can see, we have those four routes now that we've removed. Let's just remove them from main Dart file as well. And save your file, please. So what we need also is, as the caption indicates, we should show the register view if auth state is registering. OK, so in main Dart, show register view if auth state is registering. So I'm going to bring up my notes as well in here. So let's go ahead and see what we have. We have auth state logged out. What we, have, what we also have to have in here, we have to create another else statement and say if state is auth, auth state registering and open your curly brackets. Uh, one curly bracket missing. And in here, we just say return cons register view. Okay, just like that. All right, that was a lot of work that we've done. And now if you then look at your files in here, you shouldn't, you 
basically shouldn't have any errors, okay? So before testing this all, because there were just so much stuff that we've done and we've also changed our main function, it just makes sense to do a hot restart, okay? So I did a hot restart. Let me just um, resize my Visual Studio code so we see uh, our trusty SCR CPY in here. So now this is the login view. Uh, if you look at our login view Dart file, uh, if you have a look at what we did when the login button is tapped, we're literally telling uh, our auth block to do this thing in here, login, all right? So we're sending a new event to it. So if something happens to that and things don't work as well, then it says user not found wrong credentials authentication error, then we should probably actually get an error displayed on the screen. So let's test this. And you can see it says authentication error. So that's in here, okay? So that's that seems to be working very well. And it would be really good if we could actually test this, um, our loading dialog and see if it works. So I'm gonna write foobar bads in here and say login. You saw that lo loading? So that was our loading dialog. That was this logic right here. So it's, it's really cool actually how it's working. Let's go in here and say log out and log out and then we come to the login screen. So this is all working so well. And you could, and if you want to see your loading screen a little bit more, and like if you're in the process of debugging it, you could always go to your um, uh, auth block in here. And inside, when you're asked to log in, you could actually await. So you could just do like this, await future delayed, and you could say duration, and you could say seconds three, something like this, okay? So this is going to await, like it's just going to wait three seconds before it continues. So let me just save that and enter some information in here. Say Google, okay, it's our Gmail. And then say log in. Oops, that didn't work so well. <laughs> I don't know why that didn't work so well, even though this is an async function. Could this need hot restarting maybe? Maybe. Let me do log out in here and enter foo bar bass, sorry, vandat <laughs> np at gmail.com, foo bar bass, and then log in. There we go. Now it's waiting more than three seconds, kind of. Then it goes to the application. So I would say that is working very well. So we can now remove this await in here, okay? And maybe do a hot restart as well. Wow. That, that was a lot of work we did, but that's what you do with software development. Sometimes you break things to make them better. You have to break sometimes the code that you have in order to build up something better. We didn't really break things, but we, we well, we kind of did. Uh, we basically removed a lot of old, old code in order to make it uh, work better with block. And I'm, in this course, my goal is to make you a software developer using Flutter. I'm not just going to show you the right thing to do from the beginning. We're going to gradually make things better. A software developer also is not going to be, depending on their experience, they're not going to do the exact right thing from point one or point zero. They're, they're going to make experiments. They're going to Google a lot of things, look at Stack Overflow, find the right way to do things, get inspiration maybe from like another product that's kind of doing something similar and develop things one step at a time, make it better. So that's the reason we're in chapter 40 something right now. And we've just gotten to this point. Otherwise we would have done this from chapter zero or chapter one. So thank you for sticking uh, throughout, sticking around throughout this chapter and coming to this point that we are right now. So as is tradition, we're going to now commit our code and tag it. So let me do some reshuffling of the screen, go to terminal in here, minimize SCR CPY, make the screen bigger and like that and i'm going to shuffle the screen as well so you see things better so let's go ahead and have a look at our git status ginormous amount of things we've done everything is modified and there is a new file added so let's say git add all and let's git commit as step 25 because if you have a look at our logs the previous chapter was step 24 so now we're at step 25. <clears throat> so let's then push our changes now that we've committed and then we're going to say git tag and we're going to say step uh, 25 as well. So, and then we're going to push our tags as well. If you look at our tags now, we have step 24 and then somewhere in here, we should have step 25 as well, as you can see here. 
great. So congratulations for getting through this chapter. It was one of the jumpiest chapters, I would say, in this entire course in that we moved so much from file to file. So if you made it through, then congratulations. <laughs> um, so what we need to work on in the next chapter is our broken loading screen. I know it's a little bit of an anticlimax in that we just work on our loading screen. So we should be kind of proud. However, there is a problem with this loading screen, and that is because we're using navigator of contacts and then we're popping. Remember, popping inside, uh, executing pop, invoking the pop function on your navigator. Um, actually, I can show you the code without going into too much details. So let's have a look at our uh, loading dialog. See, at the bottom of this loading dialog, we're doing navigator of pop. This doesn't necessarily pop this dialog. It pops the current view on the navigator. So even if our dialog is not displayed on the screen, saying navigator of is going to confuse the navigation stack in Flutter. So we're going to have a look at that and fixing that actually in the next chapter. So grab some tea, coffee, chocolate, whatever you want to, and I'll see you in the next chapter.